for me, takes me back to the very first time I saw President Reagan. I was an NBC News reporter uh, covering the 1976 convention in Kansas City. I was sent there to cover it. And um, many of you know that that was a very hotly contested race between his sitting president, Gerald Ford, a Republican, and this incumbent. Uh, you know, the incumbency was in jeopardy because of this governor from California. Well, as you remember, that really went down to the, the week of the convention. And the night that the then President Ford won the nomination, he gave his acceptance speech. And after the networks had, uh, had shut off and literally went back to local programming, uh, and I'm sure there were some that were there, but were you, uh, um, yeah, in 1976? Was anybody there at the convention by chance? Okay. So, so what I'm saying now, you really don't know if it happened or not. Um, <laughs> but it did. Uh, actually, he got. President Reagan and, well, then Governor Reagan and Nancy to come down to the stage. Sort of a good photo op, a unity. And he did, and he spoke. And he spoke extemporaneously, and the speech that night was on freedom and nuclear annihilation, and it was completely off the cuff. And it was electrifying for those, even in the members of the media, watching. Nobody saw it. You can today go to YouTube, and I'd recommend it this week, go to YouTube, Reagan, 76th Convention, and it was one of the great speeches, and I turned to the person sitting next to me who actually was my other sister, Karen, and I said, I believe the Republicans just nominated the wrong person tonight. Uh, we interviewed Pat Schroeder, um, and she had a humorous story, unfortunately I ended up on the cutting room floor, but she said, you know, uh, with the opposition, she said, whenever we would go in to meet with the president, Invariably, he would begin with a story that would lead to another story, that then would lead to another story. And pretty soon, someone would come in, whisper in his ear, and he would go, I'm sorry, our meeting is over. <laughs> someone asked at uh, one of our events two weeks ago, what was Reagan's greatest achievement? And I say this truly seriously. He survived an assassination attempt. Eight weeks into his presidency, Hard to imagine, particularly for those that are under 30, that a man took a bullet like that and survived. Reagan's famous tear down this wall speech, I didn't know this, there were hundreds of East Berliners that were trying to get close to the wall to hear President Reagan and were being chased away with bayonets and rifles. This is just what was going on in the early 80s, 1980s form. Relations between the U.S. and USSR rarely had been worse. Proxy wars were being fought in Afghanistan, Central America. Commercial jetliners were being blown out of the sky. Strategic challenges playing out in the Middle East. The birth of Hezbollah, Party of God. Emergence of the war on terror. Terrorist kid kidnapping. Arms for hostages, among many others. And you come in to, as an incoming president, with your agenda. You are also in a position that's very fluid. You have to react to the unforeseen. And there were many, many unforeseen in the 1980s. Condoleezza Rice mentioned that the preceding presidents had used appeasement with the Soviet Union. And that uh, when President Reagan came in, he flipped that on the head, he confronted it. And uh, I, I, I think the most remarkable thing, particularly for the students that are here, is that the Cold War ended not with a bang, but ended due to uh, ideas and words that mattered. And uh, I, I think that is probably Reagan's, one of his real, truly great legacies. He didn't fire a shot. 